So uh, Chinese herbal medicine, this is gonna be a good chunk of the rest of our conversation. The herbal formulas are customized every one to six weeks, taken on an empty stomach. And um, the, um, there's a couple different forms of, of uh, herbs that, that we use. Um, the first is the, the raw for, form, the, the you know, flowers, leaves, and sticks. Um, and, uh, and traditionally, you take home a bag the, that's uh, been prepared, um, a combination of different herbs. You cook it yourself for about a half an hour to an hour. Um, kind of stink up your house, they're very smelly, and then you drink that for, the, for about one to two days, and then you repeat the whole process over again. You can imagine that compliance isn't great with the, with the raw herbs. So we use a powder, which is derived from those decoctions, and we s send people with a little spoon that's approximately one gram, and you do five grams twice a day. You just stir the powder into some water and you just drink it back. Um, and then the pills, the dosage really depends on the company and on the concentration of the herbs. It's really important to get herbs from a, a qualified practitioner and a good source. The herbs are regulated as food supplements and you want a company that has a very high quality and a lot of quality control testing. And a lot of those companies don't offer their um, herbs to, to public. You have to go through a, a practitioner. So it's important to get these um, so that something is customized for you and you're getting the best quality. Um, although the, the taste can be interesting. As the smells are interesting and the tastes are, are interesting, but very effective. TCM nutrition uh, is nutrition that's based on the principles of Chinese medicine. And just some examples uh, are to eat foods that are in season, eat lightly cooked foods and not raw foods, which can be a little bit more difficult on the stomach, and avoiding iced or, or cold drinks, and eat till you're 70% full. So just a, a little taste of, of uh, some TCM nutrition. So limitations, what I've found, as I mentioned when I first started, is that some patients don't respond to acupuncture. I had uh, a patient who, um, who uh, years ago struggled with migraines, um, uh, went to an acupuncturist and responded beautifully. Um, her, you know, her headaches pretty much went away and uh, she, never, she didn't have a problem with them. She started developing um, these symptoms of Lyme disease, got a diagnosis and thought, well, I, I know what to do, right? I know what to do for my pain. She goes to her acupuncturist and it doesn't work. She doesn't respond. Um, the interesting thing about this patient is as soon as she started getting antibiotic treatments, she started responding to acupuncture again. So it's just an interesting phenomenon that I've seen that, um, that uh, you know, so acupuncture and, uh, doesn't work all the time. The other thing is that the, the formulas also don't work the way they do with other people and with other diagnoses. The traditional tonifying formulas can actually aggravate symptoms. And uh, this is thought to be um, because the, the, the tonifying nature of the herbs is actually tonifying the pathogens as well. So it's like you're, you're helping them along. Um, and uh, I've listed a couple different um, formulas and also some individual herbs in the ginseng family that fall under this uh, category. So Gu syndrome, Heiner Fruhoff is an acupuncturist and a historian in, in Oregon. And uh, about 25 years ago, he had the same experience that I had, um, found that his patients weren't responding to traditional um, acupuncture and herbal formulas, and, um, and he had the, the benefit of a speaking fluent Chinese, Mandarin, um, and, and also being able to read um, ancient medical texts in Chinese. Um, and so what he did is, um, is he did a, a, a search um, through the, the Chinese literature. Um, uh, he, you know, he figured this can't be new. There has to be something referred in the literature to something uh, that's, that's similar to, to these inflammatory conditions that we're seeing now. Um, and, and of course, Chinese medicine has the benefit of having quite a long clinical history. So he found something called Gu syndrome, 
which translate as hidden pathogens or demons. This is the um, hexagram from the, the I Ching. And these are the pictograms that predate the, the characters. And what you're seeing is worms in a pot. That's, uh, that is what um, the, these pictograms for, for goose syndrome, worms in a pot, you know, the pot is our, uh, our stomach, this is a parasite. And uh, so the modern uh, kind of uh, interpretation of this is, um, is a parasitic infection, including um, spirochetes. This is the, the goose syndrome, you know, what he was able to find uh, in the literature, that goo toxins that have entered the core of a person's being can be compared to oil seeping into flour. It is everywhere and cannot be separated out. So the, the concept behind these treatments is separating the oil from the flour. So it's, it's, uh, it's just a different concept of, of, uh, of, of treatment. You know, so you wanna, you wanna again, tonify while, you, while you're reducing. So he separated goo into two different categories, depending on the symptoms, so brain goo and digestive goo. Brain goo, headaches, neck pain, brain fog, chronic joints, muscle pain, increased sensitivity to light, noise, and taste, restlessness, insomnia, the sensation of possession or the, the goo itself, which um, you know, is, is really interpreted, it's not like you know, possession from some, you know, from truly a demon, it's the feeling of this isn't me. This isn't who I am. I don't feel like myself. That's, that's the possession. And there are digestive issues, but they're secondary. So looking at these symptoms, you know, have we seen these before? You know, this, these are the symptoms of, of Lyme disease. And, and that's what um, uh, Dr. Fruhoff found is that, um, that Lyme disease uh, correlated with this uh, brain goo. On the digestive side, and this is important um, when it comes to the co-infections and also the folks with brain goo can, all, can have uh, the digestive issues themselves. So chronic discomfort, gas, bloating, alternating constipation and diarrhea. There's fatigue and exhaustion. The headaches that come with digestive goo are more on the, the uh, frontal headaches. Um, so we're seeing a lot of these with um, people with uh, food allergies. And, and similar kinds of, of uh, mood problems, especially insomnia, vivid dreaming, um, and nightmares. And again, this, this sensation of uh, the, the possession piece of it, you know, which is, I, I want my life back. And there can be neurological issues, but they're usually secondary. This is the treatment strategy for goo. And uh, I'm gonna go through these one by one and talk about the herbs that, um, that I use and, uh, and the other um, modalities that I would uh, use along with them for each section. The treatment time varies based on the history, when, when the diagnosis happened, and specific symptoms. Um, some people notice immediate changes uh, when they take these herbs. Um, others, it takes about six weeks, um, and the folks who are taking, um, currently taking antibiotics seem to respond um, a little bit slower. They're on the, the more of the six-week side of things um, because uh, of that building up process that's happening. If you're doing herbs only, the course of treatment is one to three years, but the, the acupuncture herbs, moxa, the additional treatments can accelerate this recovery. So this is the, the replenishing stage, that, that tonifying, which is just so, so important with the chronic diseases. So you're replenishing the qi, the blood, the yin, the yang, the jing, all those things we just talked about. Um, and the goal is to repair and restore healthy functioning. Um, so there's the, the tonify. The herbs that I'm gonna use, and um, I'm, Again, in Chinese medicine, is, there's uh, different categories of herbs. So for, um, for, custom, for customizing them, you're going to pick um, you know, maybe two from each different um, uh, category, um, the, the ones that are best suited for the patient. So there's going to be anti-Lyme uh, yin tonics, um, anti-Lyme blood tonics, and I, I listed specifically anti-Lyme because you're not gonna use the traditional tonics. Uh, you wanna use the ones 
um, that, that aren't going to help that, that pathogen along. Young tonics, aconite and uh, ginger are actually two of the most common young tonics. For some of these, I, I listed herbs. Um, just you might be interested to know uh, some of the herbs that you, you know that may be more familiar, since most of them probably aren't. Herbs that help with uh, autoimmunity, um, so astragalus, and I would do acupuncture and moxa as well for this. Addressing pain and neurological symptoms. This is the quality of life piece of this. In Chinese medicine. Um, we, we talk about diseases as both treating the branch and the root. So you have to a attend to the, the root cause of the disease, but also the branch. You know, what is the person dealing with uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so this is uh, treating the branches. The herbs are going to be pain-reducing herbs and herbs just chosen for, for those specific uh, symptoms. And again, acupuncture and moxa can be helpful. Detoxification is uh, very important for, to reduce inflammation, and uh, herbs can be used. Acupuncture, the auricular that we talked about, wet cupping and moxa, this is where that comes into to play. And also your other treatment modalities. So lymph drainage, uh, using craniosacral therapy, a cold laser, Epsom salt, bath, drinking lots of water. There's many, many different ways of doing um, detoxifications and, the, and, um, and also uh, through nutrition. Having a very clean diet will only help in this process. So now the kill the pathogen, this uh, you know, is where you're going to target the bacteria. This is the, the cleaning phase. So you've set the body up to, to get rid of the dirt. So now you can start cleaning. And there's a variety of different herbs, those antiparasitic herbs, that can help with both for uh, target spirochete and, and co-infections. And the last section, I, I listed the wind dispelling herbs. And that's really what makes this goo treatment so different from other treatments in Chinese medicine, is that you're addressing these, uh, the, the wind component of this. And antibiotics fall under this category, right? So this is, uh, this is where antibiotics come into play. And don't forget to detoxify you know, and, folk, and uh, do those treatments if those Herx reactions do come up. So once you've done the, the cleaning, now it's time to do the deep cleaning, to dredge those uh, bacteria up from their hiding places. And this, you're going to use the biofilm herbs. So um, one is uh, D. long, also called Baluk, which is from an earthworm, and use other detoxification strategies as well. It is normal to feel some regression during this phase because it's the deep cleaning. It kind of brings stuff back up. Um, so that's important to know that you know, people, you know, they may feel like they're taking a couple steps backwards, but they're not. They are, um, this is an important part of, of, uh, of treatment. And calming the Shen, reducing that emotional pain. One of my favorite herbs to calm the Shen is Swan Zhao Ren. And again, you're not going to use these herbs individually, but in combinations. The acupuncture, auricular, this is where meditation, spiritual practice can be helpful. Using psychotherapy, uh, EMDR techniques. The dust in the mirror, this is a reference to, um, you know, if, if you imagine a dust, you know, a mirror that's just covered in, in dust, right? It doesn't reflect back very well. And, um, and truly, you know, the, what we're seeing with, you know, chronic, um, diseases is that um, people forget who they are. They, they start identifying themselves not as their real self, which is, you know, which is the mirror, but the dust that's on top, the disease, right? They start to believe that they are their disease. And so it's really, really important to remind people of who they actually are and to clear that dust out of, out of the way. So the spirit is the part of us that is perfect and never gets sick. And the goo syndrome imagery, as you can tell, we, we really like imagery in Chinese medicine, is this is the recovery, this is the, the goal, is lichen on a tree. You have a big strong tree that has roots and leaves and has a you know, productive tree life. And yes, there's lichen at the bottom, but it's really not affecting the, the tree at all. To find a practitioner, 
The NCCAOM has a, a national board exam for, for acupuncturists and, and, uh, and Chinese herbal medicine. This is the, the highest uh, standards for herbal medicine or Chinese herbal medicine that we have in this country. And, and you can look for um, on their website for somebody who has either a diplomat of oriental medicine or a diplomat of Chinese herbology. And Classical Pearls Herbal Formulas is the uh, company that's associated with Heiner Fruhoff. Um, and he has a find a practitioner link on his website. So the, the practitioners on that website are, going, are likely going to be familiar with uh, the goo syndrome. And if you're finding practitioners, ask them if, you know, what their experience has been with Lyme disease and ask them if they're willing to collaborate with your medical team because it's, uh, it's so important to have everybody on board, you know, talking to each other um, to provide the best possible care for patients. To, just to end with, there's many challenges that people with Lyme disease are facing, and it's very controversial in the medical community. We've talked about brain goose syndrome, just a little bit of a different way of, of viewing the, the illness and the symptoms, and, um, and the role that Chinese medicine uh, can play for, for uh, people who have uh, um, persistent Lyme and, uh, and other co-infections. So I just want to say thank you to a few of, um, of my teachers and, and people who have helped me on this presentation. Greg Lee, who's out in Frederick, and uh, Dr. Gary, who snuck in during the presentation. And then two graduate students who uh, helped me with some of the basic science pieces of this. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight. And um, you guys all have a nice evening, OK?